All right, guys. Hello. Thank you for joining me. Uh, hopefully we're working okay this time. This is my second take for the night. Uh, if you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax and craft and work on a project together. And tonight we are continuing the Hemlock Forest Friends Unicorn by Heidi Boyd. So thanks for popping it in again, guys. Hey, Tamara. Hey, Sue. Uh, we were back. Uh, so, all right, guys. Now we're for sure going to work on, on this. Facebook just completely conked out. I restarted my phone, and now it seems to be working okay. So we are here again. We got everything cut out yesterday, and I got the little belly, and we're going to stitch his belly on today. So we'll basically be taking... We have two sides of this, this unicorn and we'll be stitching it together. <laughs> kind of like that. So that is the plan for this evening. And again, there are kits available of Heidi's, Heidi's uh, unicorn here. I have a link for them in this Facebook post. And uh, if you want it right away, there's a PDF as well. Although I totally recommend the kit. That's what I'm using. And it has everything you need in there to get going with this project, including the pins and needles. So ah, there's Heidi right there. Hello. <laughs> this is our second take tonight. So hopefully, hopefully we stay, stay live this time. So, all right, guys, let's uh, flip you around and hopefully we won't conk out again. So let's do it. All right, there's my pile of poof over there and some more poofy hair to go with it. So, all right, we are back in business here. Here's our, all our pieces still. We have um, our two ears. Oh, Kim, it probably will because, um, you know, I'm going to take tomorrow and uh, Wednesday and Thursday I won't be here. So it'll be a couple days before I'm working on it again. I'll start it up on Friday again. This will be the horn. I think this is a scrap. <laughs> and then we got our two, our two flowers here and our two sides and our little belly. So we got the belly uh, all done last night. We got it stitched together. So there we go. There it looks like a belly. Oh no, Patricia. Oh, so you guys, when I do, when it's on my side and it conks out, I will in a, a Facebook post immediately after or in the same Facebook post, I will, I will write a comment that it's not working and I'll be starting it up again. But all right, here's the pattern again. Uh, we left off here. Uh, we're gonna, ooh, and you know what? I did not check off number one. Uh, yesterday. I like checking off my my bits here. So all right assemble the unicorn body by stitching her stomach in place So stack together the body pieces. So that's just Putting this guy on top of this one. I think I accidentally kind of nicked nick this one So I think I'm gonna put that little nick to the inside so you can't see it So stack the body pieces together and pin the head and back positions together and then we're going to position the belly um, position the connected belly that's this between the body pieces so that the seamed legs of the body pieces oh wait so the top section is hidden inside there we go i'm reading two lines at once um all right so this top stick stitch section we're going to put inside I'm just kind of getting my head wrapped around here and then I'll pin everything. Um, line up the legs of the stomach pieces with the legs of the body pieces and then pin each pair together and then start stitching with the white floss at the end of the seam where the seam belly meets under the tail. So right here. And then we are going to stitch around up until where it meets right there. And then we will do it again. So, all right, I think I got it. Let's do it. So first of all, we are pinning the head and kind of the back of the body together just to kind of hold it in place. Hold our little dude in place. Oh, awesome, Jane. I'm so happy that you got your, your kit. All right, that's awesome. 
So we'll throw that guy here. And we got a few more pins here. I'm using the pins that came with the kit as well. All right, just matching up these edges here. And we'll throw one more right here. I may need a few more pins this time around. We'll see. I know, isn't it cute, Sue? I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm, I'm really excited to get this hair fuzz in. Uh, that'll be fun. All right, so we got the, the top matched up here. Now we're going to slip in our, uh, our belly. So let's just get that in there. Let's line up the legs. So the legs are going to be done one at a time. So I really just need to line up. I'll do this, this side first, and then I'll flip it around and do the other side. So I'm going to just worry about this front side lining everything up. And the other side, we'll worry about that after we're done with this. So I'm going to throw a pin in that leg. Rat lag this. And another one here. Man, I'm bummed the phone cut out tonight. That like cut like 15 minutes off of our, off of our evening. Well, that'll give us more to do on, on Friday. So it'll be okay. All right, so I have the um, the legs pinned together. I might throw another pin in the belly here, just for my own sanity. Uh, man, you know what? The only pins I have are these giant, giant ones, but they're kind of cute. So we'll we'll use one of these big old orange pins. Um, all right, so now we're going to stitch. Your legs are lining up better than mine. Oh, such careful cutting. Yeah, except for, except for the neck that I cut out. <laughs> but we'll be good. Uh, all right. So right where it meets up under, under the tail here, where the tail will be, uh, that's where we're going to start whip stitching. And whip stitching is just where you go around the hole outside. And uh, so here's where we'll start in the middle. So right where our last knot was, I'm going to start right there and then I'll whip in the same place and then just keep whip stitching around. And it says to do it about like an eighth of an inch or so, which is kind of what we did for this guy as well. So I still have that three, uh, that, that, that three threads of floss separated. So the, the threads remember came in the six strand embroidery floss and we split it uh, into three strands, two you know, sets of three strands last night. So this is what I used for uh, to stitch the belly together yesterday. And my needle, I think Phil hijacked it over here. So I think this one is the one that came with it. Yep. All right. So, oh, and you know what? We did not use the, the needle threader last night. So the kit comes with a cute uh, needle threader. Let's take that off of here. There we go. And... If you haven't used a needle threader before, well, first of all, there is instructions. Oh, I'm still here, Deborah. Come back. And uh, how you do it. So a needle threader has, here you can probably see on the white a little bit better. It has a tiny little metal kind of filament here. And this is so thin that it will fit through a needle. And... Um, Oh, you guys are cutting out. I think I'm still here this time. So hopefully it's working all right. Uh, but yeah, so it has this thin filament and that's much easier than holding thread this far away because the filament's stiff enough. So let's, let's do that. So we'll, we'll put the filament through the eye of the needle. So that was super duper easy. Now you can see it has like a little window almost, this little loop. There you can see it. I'm going to stick my thread in that loop just like that. And then we will pull it back through the eye. And that's the needle threader. So that's a pretty neat little tool that comes with your kit. But all right, here we go. And you know what? This is a pretty long piece of thread. You feel free to uh, cut it in half if you want, because it is 
it is kind of long and sometimes a long piece of floss can get a little unruly, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it a go. Oh, Charlie Ann, you're still here. Okay, good. Gretchen, you're still here. Yeah, I don't know. My, uh, my Facebook seems um, fine on my end this time. It's not giving me any messages or anything like that. And I restarted and it seems to work well. So, all right, got my knot. So again, we're gonna start at the tail. And I'm going to go in the middle of my, my two pieces. So I'm, I'm stitching, I'm gonna let this guy flop around over here. I'm stitching this leg together. So, all right. Oh, Lucy's still here, Libby's still here, Glennis. Okay, good. <laughs> good, that means, uh, that means we're still working, that's good. All right, so I'm gonna come up from the inside about an eighth of an inch or so in. And that is gonna put my knot on the inside, kind of like how this knot is gonna be on the inside too. So, all right, let's hold those two bits together. Feel free, feel, uh, free to pin more if you want, but I'm just gonna wrap the needle all the way around. So we'll kind of go in the same spot that we started out with, just for the first stitch. All right, so I've gone kind of parallel or perpendicular to my seam through that first stitch. And now I gotta just watch out for the legs so I don't catch any legs in my way. There we go. So that's our first little stitch. And now I'm going to just, I'm going to go uh, a, a, like a stitch length down on the opposite side and then it's straight, uh, straight perpendicular through again. And this will be our first, our first like whip stitch. There we go. All right, let's do that again. So another stitch length down on the opposite side and uh, perpendicular through. All right, so that's all there is to it. I'm gonna just keep going around and around like this and we can get a little bit faster maybe, we'll see. Just moving my thread out of my way. And as I get to the pins, I'll, I'll remove them and everything. So they're not, not in the way. But there we go. So now you can see we're starting to get that, that first back leg together. There. Now we'll get Cruz in here. The nice thing it, with this project is you can take some pretty big stitches here. Um, you know, just stitches enough that you won't We'll be putting the we'll be putting the pipe cleaners in there, so you don't want them so big that the pipe cleaners come through or any stuffing comes through. But because of the that it's felt and felt kind of grips to each other, I think uh, you can do a little bit bigger stitches than you know what we would normally do in in embroidery. And I'm probably making mine too small. I probably don't need them this small. Just do what's comfortable. I think that would probably be a-okay. I like this little hoof here, how it goes in. It's cute. It's so cute, this little guy. So I will be on the road tomorrow. So not only is it Thanksgiving on Thursday, so I get to spend that with my parents, but it's my dad's birthday tomorrow. So uh, we'll get to see him for, for dinner. So I'm excited for that. But that'll be, that'll be my Thanksgiving. It'll be dad's birthday and then uh, watching dogs on TV. <laughs> watching dogs and, and uh, stirring cranberries. Helping, helping where I can help. <laughs> I'm only assuming there's cranberries. I, I like I like making the cranberries. Little orange juice in there, and um, I don't know what else. What else do we put in? Ooh, pomegranates at the end. But I like when uh, when they all pop when the uh, the cranberries pop. We kind of live in cranberry territory, so it's we get some fresh cranberries usually. This is the relaxing part for sure. Um, getting to make all these, all these little stitches. 
I love it. All right, I'm gonna move this pin. Don't need him anymore. One of the nice things about this project, about Heidi's unicorn here, is that we can just whip stitch around the outside like this. We don't have to turn anything right side out or anything. It's just, it just ends up being like a pretty decorative stitch for the outside of this. You know, it's not like, it's not a hidden stitch. It's, it's part of the look of it. Ooh, Sue, you love making cranberries too. Are you gonna be making some? Oh, your cranberries came from Wisconsin. That's what I'm saying, Gretchen. We're, we're in the, uh, cranberry making area uh, the way we used to drive home we drive a different way now but um because it's a little faster but the way we used to drive home we would drive past like cranberry bogs where you can see them all all growing i've never been to a harvest though before and i, I always thought that would be really fun going to a, a cranberry har har the harvest where you're on the bog and you know all the all the cranberries float to the top they like shake them all or something. I don't quite know how it works, but then, the, well, they fill it up with water. They fill up the bog with water and then they shake all the bushes somehow. I don't know. And then they, it's just like that commercial that, that, uh, um, oh, ocean spray or whatever commercial where, with those two guys out in the bog, just like that. They all float up. All right. We're going to move, remove that pin here, match these up a little bit better. And you know, I'm just moving, I'm just scooching all this stuff out of the way here. We don't need to worry about that right now. We're just worrying about this one side. But look, it already looks so finished. That's always what surprises me. Every single time I'm working on a project, you do one little step, like with each step, it's not like a little more finished, it's a lot more finished with every, with every step. Like I feel like it's looking so pretty with these stitches. And, um, just so much more finished with them all in. Ooh, you're making cranberry scones for breakfast tomorrow. That's fancy, Deborah. That sounds amazing. I love cranberries. I, I just like, I like the tartness of it. Just um, all that tart, tart and orangey flavors with the orange juice. Oh, that's how you knew about it with that, that cute commercial. I do agree. It is a cute commercial. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still not sick. I'm still not sick of it, which seems weird because that commercial, those those um, two dudes in the bog have been around for a while. All right, we are getting to this second leg. So if you guys have not gotten this kit yet, I totally recommend it. I mean, so far, the instructions and what's in here are so good for a beginner. Like, um, you know, this you could definitely give this to a crafty kid to make for sure. I mean, technically, technically it's for ages like 13 and up. Kind of legally, that's how... It needs to be. Uh, so if you have a, a crafty kid that age and, you know, probably a younger age could do it too. But yeah, it's, it's a really nice all, all encompassing kit and, and the instructions are really clear. And yeah, it's a, it's a good way to get into stuffed animals because you don't have to you, I mean, usually you sew it on the machine and it's all like this distorted crazy and then you turn it right side out and all of a sudden you have a stuffed animal. Um, this is nice because we don't ever have to turn it right side out and, and that that's kind of sometimes the hardest thing. But this just all goes together just really intuitively, I think. We might have just enough thread to get up to the chest here, which is perfect. Almost like it was planned to do that. <laughs> We're at the second hoof. Hoove. I suppose that would be the right way to say it. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome, Heidi. 
I'm, I'm enjoying stitching him. He's definitely gonna live with my, my two little pin cushions. See, they'll be friends. They'll, they can all hang out next to each other. But yeah, I love little projects like this. Nice, nice, fun little projects to uh, um, try something new, do something you haven't done before, and get them done fast. Uh, so uh, you can get back to the big projects. Oh yeah, exactly. The long strands are nice. Yeah, now that I'm now that I'm doing this, you know, at the beginning I mentioned, oh, you could cut them if it's too long, but now I'm totally liking that it's long because I can just stitch the whole thing from front to back um, without switching threads. So it's up to you. If you're not comfortable with the long threads, then go for a couple short ones, but it is nice to not have to start and stop each time. I, I totally have enough floss for for this first um, side, and I keep catching this, this foot back here. Yeah, ready-made project. Easy and a fun project. Uh, this is... Oh, no, it's the same thing. Uh, it's it's six-strand embroidery floss, Deborah, and it, it comes with the kit, so it's six-strand embroidery floss, and uh, we've we've narrowed it down to the three strands. We've separated it into the two sets of three strands. So it's, it's uh, same size, same, same deal, embroidery floss. It'd be awesome if we could get both sides stitched tonight and um, start thinking about the, the top of it. But yeah, this is a, I think a perfect breather from the I Love, the I Love Home quilt. Yeah, yeah, and Deborah, that's, that's how it says it in the instructions, so that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the three strands. I think my stitches are getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> That's okay. All right, I'm approaching the top of this belly here. So once once I get up to here, where the belly meets the chest here, I'm gonna tie a knot and I'm gonna make sure the knot's on the inside there. So a couple more stitches and we'll be there. And we'll do the same thing. I'll start at the back again and, ooh, I'm catching my needle my thread funny, but we'll uh, start from the back again and uh, stitch up the other side. Oops, caught that foot again. I just need to move all that, that those feet out of the way like that, then I won't catch it anymore. All right, I'm going to have this be my last stitch and then I'm gonna just go around again and come back up just in the center here. There we go, pull it tight, and I'm gonna tie a little knot into the seam of, of this um, belly here. There we go. Oops, I got it caught funny, I think. Ooh, it wants to just tie a knot earlier than I want it to be a knot. All right, let's do one more. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna just trim that uh, with the scissors that exist somewhere. We'll use the mint scissors again. Or maybe we'll, let's use, we'll use the purple scissors that matches nicer. Okay. Boop. All right, so there we are. First little side on there. Look, he's so cute. Okay, let's flip it around. And uh, now we're gonna start at the back by the tail again and do the same thing up to the chest. So 
Uh, let's, we gotta pin those legs again. So now we're gonna pay attention to these legs and getting them matching just right. So we'll pin, oop, that's a needle. Pin this guy here. Oh, you were wondering what color tonight. <laughs> we're doing purple, it matches all, all of the purples. All right, and this guy. Oh, which reminds me, you guys, I will be sending an email out tomorrow morning before I head out, head out of town. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, so uh, if, you're, if you're not on my newsletter yet, uh, just go to penguinandfish.com and uh, a pop-up will come or just go to where it says free pattern and you'll be signed up there. But I'll have a little special thing for my newsletter peeps uh, going out tomorrow. So make sure to check that out. Okay, I think we're ready. I know, I love her little legs too, Gretchen. Aren't they sweet? So soon we'll, we'll get to stuff these guys down in there, which I'm kind of excited about. I've never, never done that with, um, with the pipe cleaners before. All right. We are matched up. Let's grab our other half of our three strands. Ooh, this might be the one that, this might be the shorter piece. This might be the one that we cut or that we sewed the belly together with. Um, so we might not have the same amount for this whole thing, but we'll see how it goes. Otherwise, we'll just start a new one. Oh, dang, Gretchen, you're right. I was going to show the bundle bag. Um, I forgot to bring that over. Shoot. Well, I, I'll bring it with me to uh, my parents' house. I'm going to pack up all this stuff tonight after, after I'm done, so I'll be sure to grab it, and I'll show it on Friday. I'm so sorry, Gretchen. I totally spaced on that. But yeah, I will, I'll be sure to remember to bring that so I can share. Got busy today and forgot. All right, again, I'm going to start from the inside. And we'll do that first whip stitch. All right. Now we'll just do all our whip stitching again. Now we're just on the other side. Again, I'm about a, an eighth of an inch from the edge, maybe a little bit more, about an eighth of an inch. And going down a stitch and then parallel through. And I'm always, um, I always start from the right and go left each time. So you never, you're not going right, left, left, right, right, left, 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 right. You're, you're always going like right to left, right to left. Or opposite way if you're doing it that way. Hey, John. I'm gonna see if John can get the bag. <laughs> hey, John. Could you go in the bin in my office and um, get the finished hedgehog bag out of there. All right, <laughs> John's gonna go get it. All right, I'm gonna unpin, eh, yeah, I'm gonna unpin it now. It's holding together really well with the, with the, just the stickiness, not stickiness, but with the grippiness of the, um, of the felt, so I, don't, I think at this point I don't need that pin, I just need to keep checking on it. Make sure all the little points are together. Yeah, that, thanks. All right, so here's, here, here you go Gretchen, here's the, uh, this is the bag that some of you got in your embroidery supplies bundle. And 
here's it all stitched up. <laughs> so this uses all the, oh, there's nothing like having a John on your team. <laughs> I know, right, Heidi, exactly. Oh, he cuts all the felt for you. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> But you guys, if this, um, if you did get one of these in your pack, you can embroider through it. And you know, here's the backside. So you can see all, all the stitches. You can line it um, if you want. But this has, the, it uses the same, the same thread that is in your embroidery supplies bundle. So uh, if you're interested, this is what it looks like stitched. And I did, I think I used, yeah, I used six strands for this. So. The weave is wide enough that you can do all six strands of embroidery floss through it, but you can do three strands as well. This is six strands, Gretchen, so if you look closer up. So it is like twice as thick as what we normally do, because uh, I usually only do three strands, but this guy's, got, this guy's got all six here. And the six strands just makes it fatter, fatter than the rest. So some of you got this in your um, supplies bundle. It's just, um, it was, I have a, I just had a limited amount of these left. So not everyone got them in the, the bundle. It was kind of a, a first come first serve bonus to the bundle, but I think a lot of you still, still got them. So yeah, uh, they are stitchable. So that's, that's what it looks like all stitched up. <laughs> Uh, it is not a pattern, Kathleen, yet. Uh, right now, it's just an idea. <laughs> uh, I may have them as kits later, but I'm still, I'm still working that out. So um, what you guys got in your bundles was kind of part of my idea process. <laughs> so uh, that's that. The fabric is kind of, it's very, very similar to what we... Um, what's in my kits. It's, it's a, uh, it's like an unbleached muslin kind of fabric. It's a little looser weave than what's in my kits. But yeah, so I have actually that design and one other bag design and I'm, I'm working on making it into a potential kit. Although I have some other kits that may be coming out before then, so I will for sure keep you guys updated on that. Uh, just waiting on a, a few variables for for that, but yeah, it may be it may be a kit coming up, but probably not for a little while yet. So that's like a super sneak peek, and for you guys that did get get them in their in the bundle, um, you have them before anyone else. Oh, thanks, Joe. But yeah, it's still it's still in the question mark stage. <laughs> but you guys are always first to see all that all the question mark stuff here. Like the scissors and stuff too before I decided if I wanted to do the scissors or not. You notice it was a looser weave. Oh, you like the fabric. Yeah, so it is it is just kind of like a muslin. And muslins come in in different different weaves too. So there are some looser weave muslins out there. So if you like something like that, then then that's what I would look for. Um, I have a hedgehog kit. There's probably a hedgehog in my book. There's like an itty bitty hedgehog like this big in, in my book, Kathleen. Just not, a, just not a big one. You sound like me. You're so fun to create new designs. So much work to get the final product out. Exactly, Heidi. So it's always, it's always ideas. Ideas are the fun and, um, and easy part and the playful part and then it's then it's the question mark of what do i do when and how and uh, you know can it be turned into a kit so everyone has what they need or is it just not going to work for that um and getting samples and, and all that stuff so it's a whole thing once you come up with an idea <laughs> but uh these may become a kit I have I have it all ready for a kit. I'm just making the final the final decisions on it. I have some other kits that I think will be coming out a little sooner, and I and I'm just deciding whether to throw this in in that batch of kits too, which I which I might. So, 
Still in decision land, like always. But yeah, I actually have a, uh, there, I have another bag design too of a, another nitty kitty, but, but in uh, this style a little bit more like the one in this bag, like a, with a lot more going on and, and stuff to stitch. We'll see. I don't know. A book bag for the grandchildren. Oh yeah, that'd be great. So if you, if you do that, like if you're gonna, if you have one of these bags, or um, if I turn them in a kit later, and if you want to use them for like a book bag, because it'd be great for something like that, um, you might want to stitch a little lining into it to protect the, the stitches. And maybe, you know, if this does end up as a kit at some point, maybe I'll, I'll do like a little tutorial on how to make your own lining for it. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, your black four, uh, I love home is in there. Oh, nice Gretchen. Yeah. And it, what I like is that the design is printed on there. So if you didn't even, if you didn't want to, um, stitch it, you don't have to, the design's still there or, you know, you could color it in or, or do whatever you want. All right. Here's leg number two. I just took the pin out. So I gotta make sure I stay matched up here. I'm getting kind of floppy around here. I can tell that it's it's getting later. <laughs> I, later, the later and later it gets, the more and you know the more tired I get, or, or the later it gets, the more my perfection brain wants to overpower my just go eighty percent brain. So uh, I can tell that my stitches are getting smaller and they're trying to be more precise and slower. And I don't need to do that. I just need to stitch. Oh, she's already claiming it as her home to do the embroidery. Oh, that's so sweet. Or you can use a few. Oh, fusible interfacing inside the bag to protect the embroidery too, like the Pelon SF101. Oh, Patricia, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, you could do that as well. I have not done that before, but that, that makes sense. All right, we're going around the last hoof here. Is anyone else watching the dog show with me? I know we talked about it already. We should uh, take bets on like who's going to win. My mom and I are pretty good at guessing the, the overall winner. So we'll see. I'm excited, <laughs> excited to, to watch. It's so stupid, but I love it. Ah, oh, you're gonna watch it, nice. <laughs> My brother always liked, um, oh gosh, I think, what is it? The Shih Tzu that looks like just a giant or not a giant, it looks like a, just a puff of cloud that kind of floats <laughs> when it, like it barely moves and it, and it just kind of hovers, hovers in a puff down the thing. Oh, they watch football. I, I think, uh, oh yeah, I think um, that's right. I think usually by the end of, um, towards the end of the dogs, people are watching football usually already. Yeah, that's true. I don't think, I don't think Packers play though, so. Not sure. So I think I'm gonna have just enough thread again for this. So this, this is working out awesome for the thread length. Oh yes, the Yorkies are cute. <laughs> I always kind of like the big dogs. I love, you know, like the big, the really big dogs that you don't see a lot, like the, like the Irish wolfhound or, you know, there's that deer hound that's huge too. I just think they're so cool. Those super giant dogs. And I like when there, there's like eight different sizes of the same dog. I think that's funny. 
Like we got the the uh, Doberman Pincher and then the uh, medium sized Pincher and then the Mini Pin Pincher, <laughs> Min Pin. I don't know. I think it's all funny. Oh, yep, and you got the big poodles and the medium sized um, poodles and the the itty bitties, Newfies, like the, the Newfoundlands. All right, we are just almost up here. We can probably get him to stand now. Great Danes, oh yeah, all those guys. I think they're just fun. Oh, you had a Yorkie. That's sweet. All right, I totally have just enough thread here. And I do think that this is the, the one that I did shorter or that I stitched the belly with, so it's a little shorter, but it's still it's still enough, and I'm doing pretty small stitches too. Oh, here I'm gonna I'm gonna unpin this guy for a moment, just so I can. Uh, actually, I'm gonna completely unpin him because I'm gonna pack him up tonight. But I'm gonna unpin it so I can open this up and see see what I'm doing now. Oops, shoot, lost my lost my needle here. Ooh, this would actually be a good time for, let's use the needle threader again. Wow, that is really easy to thread. Because um, my threads are all a little different length here at the end. I could just snip it too to make it clean, but we'll do it this way. There we go. All I need to do is tie this knot here. So I'm on, on the inside again, and that's where I'll tie this knot. I'll do another, another one, and we should be good. All right, so let's snip that. We didn't have much left there. All right, so there we are. We have the the legs stitched on, so we can probably get it to stand. There we go. He's standing. <laughs> so, all right, guys. I think that's what we'll do this evening. I know we didn't get as much done because I conked out at the beginning here, but um, we will pick this back up on Friday at my parents' house. So we'll be in my mom's sewing room again. Here, let's stick this guy on here. Um, so then what comes next is we will stitch up the chin here and we will get the, the little nose in here. So this is going to be, um, this will probably be the most difficult part, most likely, but I think we'll do it just fine, and then we'll also get the ears in there as we go. So we'll give them a little fold like that and get them in there. So there we go. <laughs> that looks like a face, right? So all right, so that'll be the next the next bit, and then we get to start. Um, oh, I think before that we get to put the we get to put the legs in too. So the legs are going to be these guys here. I think we bend them again, but we'll we'll um, we'll get to that on Friday and then that'll add like some sturdiness. And I think that's how we stuff, stuff the legs as well. But we'll see, I haven't read that far ahead yet, but we did get the, the two body pieces and the belly together tonight. And he stands, which is awesome. <laughs> so, all right guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we will call it an evening. All right, so here he is looking so cute. Oh, he's got a little fuzzle. There we go. He's got legs. <laughs> I always say he, but you know, in the instructions it's a she. But unicorns can be he's too. <laughs> All right, and I gotta get the hair again just because it's fun. Boof, there we go. <laughs> as cute. All right, guys. Um, oh, Thanksgiving to my family. Oh, to you guys as well. And uh, thanks so much again for joining me. I hope you guys all have an amazing holiday. 
Uh, I will, oh, and a reminder, I will have that email going out tomorrow morning. So again, if you haven't signed up to my newsletter, you do get a free pattern for signing up. You can do that at penguinandfish.com and then you'll get the email for tomorrow morning. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing uh, holiday. And oh, thank you, Heidi. A safe travels to all of you too, if you're headed out and give your family hugs. <laughs> so all right, guys, have a great, uh, have a great holiday. See you later. See you Friday.